Okay, welcome to this uh, pre-audit seminar of, uh, of our, our quality assurance system audit that will be in, in April. Uh, but uh, first of all, um, we would like to show the program of today. And is there anyone else except Anders who, who speaks English in this uh, situation here? So we, we anyhow we have to we, we 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 will speak English because this will be streamed. So maybe someone will follow us later on. So okay, here here is the program of of today. So um, we have actually been planning the this uh, event with with the students. So Sophia, uh, she's the, she's uh, the member of the of the uh, board of, of UniArts, so she will be leading the discussions today. And we have uh, two guests here, so um, the chair of the audit um, evaluation uh, team, Minna Ilos, and uh, from Karvi, senior advisor, Kati Isoaho. And um, well, that's the core of, of our event today. That uh, our specialist will will explain what 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 does the audit actually mean. And uh, at the end, we will have the panel discussion, and uh, Sofia will lead uh, the panel. Uh, so we will have here uh, Frank Brummel there, and Siri Maya Heino. And Lauri, student, and then Rika. Okay. So we'll start. First of all, I would like to give just a, a, a short explanation that how did we actually develop our quality assurance system? So shortly we say quality system, but actually the word assurance is very important because it means that it's not about the quality itself, but the, how do we assure that there is the quality. So we started actually planning the quality system already when the fusion of or merger of these three academies uh, came true. So in 2013 we had a group that started to develop certain tools for the quality assurance system. And actually we started first to look at the the previous quality systems that we had in, in the academies. And then we started to develop our, uh, the, uh, the ideas of what, what should the, the quality system mean in, in UniArts. So we, for example, created the quality wheel, and we uh, also took Servipal a new, a better system for for um, feedback, feedback, a feedback system, and also uh, IMS that is for uh, how describing the processes or drawing some pictures of the processes. And uh, then we did also self assessments of the all of our programs. And. Actually, last year we started to put everything together. So we we started uh, developing the the quality manual that is in art in Artsy. There you can find under organization there is a quality manual. So that will give a whole idea of what is the quality system of UniArts. And we started also to um, to develop the self evaluation report. We did it, um, uh, empowered different groups, but at the end, the self-evaluation report was uh, kind of finalized by our leading group or executive group. So um, now we are here, uh, the pre-seminar pre at the end of, of this picture. Okay. Okay, so welcome on my behalf also. 
Uh, I'm Sofia and I'm the student uh, member of the board and also the uh, member of the student union board <laughs> where I'm a vice president. So, But uh, we met up with like six or seven students throughout the fall and this uh, spring uh, and talked about quality with Paula and Alina Savolainen and talked about quality and quality system in our university and what it means to us. And this is what we came up, that quality means excellent and functioning operations of the university, which kind of means that everything goes smoothly and nobody is annoyed by anything. <laughs> and everybody is able to do their work. So that is quite how it works if it's working well. Um, about the quality system, which is the like kind of a, a operational side of how we manage the quality to keep up with its level, is the thing that Paula has been developing with and Alina has been developing with other uh, workers in our university. Um, but the quality system, the meaning of it is it to support UniArt's functions and continuously develop the university, which means kind of that uh, we learn to acknowledge what is good already and be satisfied with that, but also what can we do better. It doesn't mean that everything is bad and everything must be changed. <laughs> this is what we already talked about in the morning when we had an another seminar at Sibelius Academy's building. And then this is the stage where we have an audit, which means that there is this Garvi, the student evaluation... What was the ending of that? Student evaluation in English. Garvi is in English. It's the Finnish Education Evaluation Center. Yeah, that was the. <laughs> yeah, so sorry, I didn't. Yeah, but yeah, Carvi is coming here and evaluating our operations and services. And for uh, us, it means that there will be a group of people who are interviewing us. That is the thing in practice. And they will ask questions from a certain group of people, and there has been, uh, they have decided certain. Uh, study programs where they will concentrate and that kind of thing. But the, this is the point where we can like concentrate on these matters of quality and good atmosphere and developing the university and then how we will continue from that. And yeah. We have also many pictures in our school about this uh, quality system and this is... I. This is a bit uh, funny that I'm explaining this to you when I see that there are a lot of professors and teachers in the audience. So you, I guess you all know this pretty well. That, and you have been also developing this thing, this quality wheel. And yeah, but it shows quite nicely that there are uh, many, many like or parts in our school that are part of the quality system. It's not only like uh, organizational, but it also includes students that they have to, they have to take their part in quality in providing quality to our school and teachers and stuff and all that. Mm. And then we have this thing called Laatu Pakki in Finnish quality tools, which is which are the things that we can use to support our quality system. And I let Paula to explain a bit more about these tools that what actually means images and charts and how they are part of our quality system. So please yeah, actually, um, I would like to first uh, say that we have, we have realized that it's very, very good to find some slogans to to give a kind of simple example of or, or simple picture of what is what is quality assurance system. So we have said lot on sähläyksen vähentämistä. So it means that uh, we have quality is messing less, messing up less. 
and uh, we have a slogan, uh, sujuva toiminta, rohkea asenne, uh, smooth operations, bold uh, attitude. But I found out a new one. It is hyrrä ja pakki, 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 hyrrä ja pakki. Koska uh, näin se jää mieleen. Did you, did you, did somebody see this one uh, performance in Zodiac? Where was this? Pissa ja katta, pissa ja katta, pissa ja katta. So this is like the, the children's hyrrä ja pakki, hyrrä ja pakki. It's easy to... Like wheel and tools, wheel and tools, wheel and tools. It's easy to remember. So if you don't know, understand. Yeah, it <laughs> and uh, it's then you. That's very shortly. You know what is what is quality assurance. Okay, about the images and charts, uh, we have. Uh, it's very important that we have, for example, organizational charts to so that people have possibility to to see who is in charge or what what area of operations. So it doesn't mean, I have heard a lot of that, oh, we don't want this, want this, want this uh, uh, that or something like, uh, I don't want to see who is leading or something like that. But it's very important to be able to see who is in charge or what. So that's why we have a lot of uh, organizational charts at the moment. Uh, also, we have tried to make draw these pictures so it's easier to remember what it what it is all about. Uh, then we have regulations and guides, so we have a certain uh, what is reunaehto in English? Certain kind of limits and for our operations, so there's law, the law, university law and, and uh, certain regulations that give us kind of a um, yeah, some kind of limits how we can, what we can do and what we can't do. And we also have some guides, for example, uh, epäasiallisen kohtelun opas. So, uh, ehku, <laughs> how to, <laughs> how, <laughs> how to treat inappropriately people. <laughs> so, how to, uh, how not to. Uh, behave, how not to behave, behave inappropriately, how to prevent uh, inappropriate, inappropriate behavior, behavior and or and harassment. So we have all this kind of a guide, so, <laughs> so you can check what, what, how, what you shouldn't do, <laughs> or what to do actually after, if you, if you um, see something like that. Okay, everyone knows about that. We have been talking a lot about that. Uh, strategic documents, well, there's the strategy, but there is also the, um, for um, HR, there's um, certain policies, tilapolitiikka, henkilöstöpolitiikka, all kind of, uh, kind of strategic, strategic papers that give us a kind of a, a direction, where to go. Uh, then uh, one of the main parts, the evaluation and feedback system, that is very important for students to be able to give feedback. But it means also that uh, the, uh, the staff has to be able to give feedback to, to their sub or uh, their esimiehille. Um, yeah. Um, also the other way around. There's kehityskeskustelut, development uh, discussions where where. Uh, the bosses can give some feedback to the subordinates. Um, I would like to add here that this is like a very, for me it, at least, it seems as a very important part of this uh, tool pack because the evaluation actually tells us that are the guides and regulations and strategies, are they working or in practice or not? Because it's not enough that our, we have a paper that prevents harassment if it doesn't work in practice so it's very important yeah that's kind of a, a, a place where you can where we can see if the wheel is actually working so that's the tool for that uh, then we have process work uh, we have a lot of processes that uh, are continuously uh, going around every year for example uh, valinnat uh, so the audition 
processes. So we have been practicing those for years and years, but still we have to develop those and make them more smooth, or sm yeah, smoother. And also we have project work and, uh, for example, this new building that will be just besides <clears throat> this building is a big uh, project and we have to be able to assure that everything goes smoothly with that project. So we have uh, kind of tools for um, taking care of these big projects. So we have to be very good in projects as well. And in the future, there may be maybe some new tools that we don't yet have. So there are some, um, you know, extra uh, lockers where you can put new tools. Okay, then maybe we can go to yeah, our to Minna, Minna. To talk about yeah. actual audit. Thank you, and good afternoon to everybody, and very nice to get to know you, know you all. Uh, Katia and myself are here to tell a little bit more about the objectives, methods, and the practice of this audit, and I will be myself concentrating more on the objectives, the targets, and, and the method. And uh, maybe here at the beginning, just a few words about myself. So I'm working as vice president at Haga Helia. It's a university of applied sciences, Ammattikorkeakoulu. We are the second largest university of applied sciences in Finland. We have 11,000 students, so quite a large, large operation. Uh, previously, I worked seven years uh, for Aalto and then 12 years for, for Hanken. So this uh, field of research universities is quite familiar to me too. But I'm very happy that I got this task because I think it's really interesting and a great learning process to get to know a university which is from quite a different field than, than the ones that I have been working at. So it's, it's a learning, learning experience for myself too. But as I told you, so uh, I will mostly be focusing on the objectives and methods of the audit. And in the very first flights, there will be some perspectives on the audit process, uh, more like a European perspective than a national perspective. Then we will go through the objectives. Uh, and then uh, what is the final result of, of the audit in, in the form of, of the report. But very briefly about the background of the audit. So uh, I think we have all heard about the Bologna process, which was established for, for some, I think, some decade ago already, even, even more. Uh, and uh, there, the, the idea was that um, uh, or there was a great need or demand for a quality assurance system of the Finnish higher education. So they wanted to have some kind of a certificate uh, or, or um, uh, accreditation system also for the Finnish HEIs. And what uh, we chose here in Finland, and I think this was really a great choice, is that our audits are enhancement-led. So that the idea is not so to say to, uh, well, put it crudely, to criticize the university, but more to find what the strengths are and what the development areas are in order to, to build and develop better, better operations uh, from the point of view of the management, the students and the whole uh, university community. And since 2005, uh, FinHeg has been conducting these audits and the first round was uh, 5-11. And now we are already going through the second cycle of the audits, uh, which is uh, during the, uh, between the years 11 and, and 18. So this is a little bit the, the European background. Then from the national uh, point of view, of course, uh, it's, it's very important to know uh, uh, what the level of quality in our HEIs are, in our higher education institutions. So, we simply get more information through these systems, both for the ministry and for the universities themselves and for, for different stakeholders. And then, of course, I think this is a great tool for the management of the universities and, and for, for different uh, educational institutions to get information where the quality assurance systems right now lies, lies in, in the school that is in question. And uh, I personally remember from from my time at Aalto, that Aalto was a 
very much targeting at getting the three most prestigious accreditations or quality labels uh, given to business schools. They were AACSB, AMBA and EQUIS. And um, Aalto was actually, the, or at that time Helsinki School of Economics, was the first business school in, in the Nordic countries to get the so-called triple crown or the three accreditations. And it was a great selling argument also for international students. So they, they do have do have an importance and, and tells about the quality, for instance, for international stakeholders or, or even for a, a Finnish, dom so to say, domestic student who, who wants to look at the quality of our inst educational institutions. So it's really a tool for continuous development. And I think Paula here also mentioned that it's important to know who is in charge or what in a university. And I think we all know that it might not always be clear how the responsibilities are divided within a university. So this kind of a quality assurance system also defines the responsibilities and how the responsibilities then should be visible in our actions, operations, and how they, for instance, finally should look from the student's perspective that that the course that I am taking as a student, how it is organized and who, who, who is in charge of what. So this is a very kind of practice-oriented way to think about quality assurance. And then, of course, it gives, gives possibilities for the society in general and for the student to also take part in the development of, of, of our higher education institutions. <coughs> okay, then maybe... A few words about the basis of auditing in, in Finland. So I think it's it's uh, important to to emphasize that the quality assurance systems uh, at the different universities may differ. Universities are, are very different, and and uh, Uniarts has its very specific characteristics. You have uh, the artistic production and artwork in the center of your operations, where you differ maybe from the traditional research universities. Nevertheless, you have research, teaching and very many simi similar uh, features that the other universities have. But uh, this uh, quality assurance system that you have been building, it's specific for, for your university. So th there is, uh, there is um, kind of uh, the understanding that, that the, the sure assurance systems can differ, differ between universities. Also, the quality management has to be a co comprehensive system, so it has to cover the whole university. It cannot focus on some parts of it, but it has to co cover all the operations and also the stakeholders and the whole kind of working field, operating field of a university. Uh, what I would like to emphasize is that the audit team is not um, looking at the operations of your university in general, but we are particularly looking at the quality assurance system. So it's the quality assurance system that is under the loop, so to say now, not, not the university's operations in general, but the quality assurance system. Obviously, it's an integral part of, of managing a university, but this is the focus of, of the audit. And once again, I think it's really important that uh, the whole evaluation aims at developing a university, so we use this term enhanced-led evaluation. So it's meant to give you more ideas and, and, and guidance on how to develop your, your own university. And then objectives of the audit, so, so I think it's quite obvious that the audit wants to look whether the quality system meets the national criteria uh, that, that, that corresponds to the European quality assurance principles and recommendations that we were talking about in the beginning of this presentation. And a very important material for the auditors, for, for, the, for, for the group that I am part of, is your self-audit report. So we have been reading it very carefully and the, the audition is based on the material that you give to us. So we don't use any, any other material. It's, it's the material that you have produced where you evaluate your own systems and you describe your own systems. So that's the material that, that we are, we are working, it, working with. Uh, there is the report and then there is, of course, some, some other material. There are the samples of, of certain uh, degree programs and, and some, some, some other material. But basically, the material is what you deliver for us. And then I think it's also an important um, 
aspect of, of the auditing or in the philosophy of auditing that we do this because we also want to share good practices within the Finnish uh, university community. So the reports, which I think it's really an interesting reading, I don't know whether you have read other universities' reports, but you can learn very much by reading the other reports. So the report that will be produced also on the basis of this audition, I think it will be interesting reading for others. So there is like a mutual interest between the universities to learn from each other and to benchmark each other so that we can, we can have a look where we are ourselves standing and, and what the others are doing. And then uh, ultimately, of course, it's on your responsibility how you will use the results of the audit. And, and of course, uh, Karvi wishes that this will help you and, and give guidance to you um, in, in your future development efforts. So this is the, the ultimate goal uh, of the audition. Now, then I'll go over to talk about a little bit about the criteria used in the audit. And uh, then I have one picture which, which I think really nicely gathers together all the elements that, that we are looking at. But I think the system itself, in a sense, is simple, how the audit is, is done. So the, the criteria that we are using is it is a four-grade scale. Uh, there are different elements. We'll have a look at the elements in the, in the next slide. The elements that we assess, we assess them with four criteria, absent, emerging, developing, or advanced. And in order to pass the audit, uh, no one of the areas that we are auditing can be absent. I think this somehow goes without saying that the parts have to be in place. No one of the elements can be absent. And then uh, as a whole, the, the part which is uh, number six, which is the quality assurance system, it has to be at least at the stage which is called developing. And I think this also makes sense that it has to be at least the whole quality assurance system at the developing stage. So the framework, I think, is it's rather clear and, and easy to, to understand. Then the elements uh, that we are looking at, ob obviously quality policy and how the quality system is linked with strategic management. And here I think it really becomes clear that the strategy of the university has to lead the whole quality assurance system and how it is put in place. So uh, all the actions here are, uh, are looked upon from the perspective of the university strategy and how the strategy is visible in these different elements. So development of the quality system, important part uh, of the audition. And then I think uh, those elements that are numbered four are very familiar to all of us. These are the tasks that are defined by law to the universities. There are the core duties, the degree programs, the kind of the offering of education that, that we are uh, giving to our students, uh, degree education. And then, of course, research and development, and in your case, also artistic act activities. And then our societal impact for C, social societal interaction and regional development work. I think for A, B, and C, we all know that these are the things. These are the things that... So I think these are the things that are familiar to all of us. Uh, degree education, research development, um, and innovative actions, artistic activities, and then societal interaction. And then uh, the fourth element that we are looking at is uh, an optional audit target. Uh, for you, it's the strategic planning of your education as a free, free translation from the Finnish words. And then uh, number five are the samples of degree education. There we have three programs. You have yourselves uh, chosen musiikkikasvatus and then kuvataiteen tohtoriohjelma. And the audit team uh, wanted to look at the um, Swedish language uh, skådespelarkonst. So these are the three samples uh, that we will be specifically looking at. And then, as I mentioned earlier, of course, the most important thing is number six, the quality system as a whole. 
And uh, as you can remember from the last slide, there the stage has to be at least developing, so number three on this four grade scale. Is there something that you would like to ask about the basic elements at this point or something you would like to comment? We will have time for discussion also later, but I'm happy to answer if there are some thoughts at this stage. Okay. Then pass, passing the, the audit, this is of course something that in, interests us all and um, uh, the final decision whether the university passes the audit or not will be taken by, by FINEC, uh, their, their committee, uh, on the recommendation of the audit team. So, so my team and myself, we will give a recommendation and then it will be decided um, at FINEC what the final result is. And I think this is very important because obviously we don't have such a large uh, experience of auditing compared to Kati and her colleagues. So this, of course, ensures that is, it is objective and done, done uh, so that there is a balance uh, bet between all the universities that, uh, that are audited. So it's very important from, from the kind of the objective, objectivity of this process. And then, of course, um, if, if the university passes the, the audit, there will be a nice, nice label that you can put on your, or your website. And, and it's, of course, kind of a marketing, marketing tool also that, that we, can, we can use. But here I would like to still emphasize that it is the quality assurance system that we are looking at, not like in general your operations. Please. Yeah, it's, it is either you pass or you don't pass. And Kati, Kati will tell more about this. If one passes, of course, it's champagne and hooray. But if you don't pass, so, so there, are, there is a, a, a process uh, which I think it's called re-audition in English. And Kati, Kati will tell a little bit more about that. Uh, right. Then result and, result and report, so uh, as we were talking about, um, as we were talking earlier, uh, this audit will uh, result in, in an audit report, which is a, a little booklet, and it will also be pu published uh, on, on, the, on the net. And uh, this will happen, as we have agreed uh, with the UniArts, on the 20th of, of sept September, so after, after our summer leave. And then there will also be a, a, a seminar where we will have an opportunity to meet again and discuss the results uh, later on. That will happen the 28th of... I think it was... Yes. 28th of September 2018. So there will be another opportunity to discuss the results and also more in detail discuss the different uh, strengths and, and the development areas that will be detected during, during the audition. Okay, it's always nice to know who is in the audit team. I think we have a really, really nice and cooperative team. Um, my, my colleagues in the team are quality manager Pirjo Halonen from the University of Jyväskylä. Uh, there is always a student member also in the audit team and Juha Isotalo uh, from Turku and Helsinki is our student member. Uh, then there is also a representative, so to say, from the work life, from the real life. And in our team, it's Minna Kaisa Kuivalainen from, from Tampere Music Festivals. And then another university representative is Mika Petri Laakkonen from University of Lapland. And then in our team, Kati Isoaho is working as project manager and Kati's backup is Anni Turnas. She couldn't be here today, but Kati and, and Anni are leading and guiding the, the process together with us. So this is, this is my last slide and uh, I think it's a really important slide and, and tells about this impartiality and objectivity which are essential parts of the whole audit process and 
Everything has to be transparent and evidence-based. As I told you earlier, the material that we are reading and getting familiar with is what you produce. So everything is based on, on your self-evaluation and other material that you have provided the audit team with. So it's, it's based, based on material that, that you know. Everything is confidential uh, except the report that will be public, publicly delivered and of course uh, from a learning point of view it's really important that the final report can be shared. And then uh, I think personally it's also very important to keep in mind that this is an interactive process that uh, we all have a part in it, in it and specifically during the, the, the week in April when the audit team is here in a sense, I see that the material that you provide us with, it's the bones, and then you will kind of give the flesh around the bones when we visit you. You have the opportunity to, to tell us how, how experiences from, from practice and how you yourselves see your operations. So it will be a good mix of, of material that we can, we can read and then interaction. So I think this is really, really an important aspect in the whole process. I guess these were my slides, so if, if you have something you would like to comment and ask at this point, you are welcome to do so. I would like to know that how the members of the audit team were chosen. Okay, I think Kati might be able to answer this better. Yes, uh, thank you for the question. So um, we have a team for all the project managers who carry out similar audit projects. And then uh, because we have been carrying out uh, more or less similar audits since 2005, we already have a relatively extensive list of both domestic and international experts. Uh, and we share information on the possible experts who could be nominated for the teams uh, among the project managers. And then um, we always try to find a best fit for purpose team for each institution, because we realize that institutions are different in child, in, in child and institutions are different when it comes to the disciplines and so on. And then there are some general guidelines in the FINEC audit manual, how to select a team. So in every team, there have to be one representative from universities, uh, so-called classical universities, and one representative from the universities of applied sciences. As Minna mentioned, there have to be one student representative and one who is representing the working life outside the institutions. And then if anyone is interested to act, as an auditor. So ac actually, you are free to propose yourselves because we are open for a new you know, proposal. So if anybody is, in, is interested, you can just email and send your curriculum vitae for us. And then we keep a list on the people who've been proposing. Then we also can get some suggestions from our sister organizations from abroad because at least on the European level, we have our relatively much cooperation among the similar organizations carrying out the external quality assurance on the national level. Thank you. Oh, I think it's time. Uh, thank you. Uh, for the recording. Sorry. That's why. Yes, I... You don't have to answer the question, but uh, as program, the Swedish acting program is then a joker in this context, uh, chosen then by you, the audit team? By may the audit team, yes. May I ask uh, on why? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I'm these, it's, it's proper proper that way I can answer them. Of course, we have to look a little bit from where the other samples that you give are chosen. So we had Musiikki Kasvatus, which is from Sibelius Academy. And uh, then we have a Kuvataiteen Tohtori uh, Ohjelma, which is from the Academy of Fine Arts. So in a sense, we found it natural that the third one, which we were free to choose, could be from the Theatre Academy. So that was one reason. And uh, then, then we had a look, which, from a point of view, which could be interesting for us, and then we landed on this choice. 
And then, of course, we always look also a little bit at the numbers, how many students there are. If it's a tiny little degree program, it might not be so good for maybe auditing purposes and, and so on. Any other questions at this point? I was trying to look at the schedule here. Is it true that we are the last one to be audited now in this round? Kati, you have more information about this? Except there will be, uh, if I remember it correctly, there will be one or two re audit positions from this round which comes after you. But in the category of normal audits, you will be the last one to get a, to get a decision from the committee. Yes, you're right. The third round. I will tell a bit more about the coming upcoming third round in my presentation because, of course, it's relevant for you as well. So you're right. Okay, I think we can go on. Okay, good afternoon everybody from my side as well. So, as you have been told already, I'm Kati Isvaha. I work as a senior advisor for FINEC and I'm a project manager for your institution's audit process. And as a practice, we always, or at least in most cases in FINEC, we work in pairs. So as Minna already told you, I will be the project manager for your project and then my pair in this project among my colleagues is planning officer Anni Turnas, whom you will meet at the time of the audit visit a couple of weeks later in April. So uh, shortly about my own background. So I've been working in the field of higher education, let's say since 1990. Uh, I started in the student organizations, as many of the people have done in Finland in this kind of positions. <laughs> uh, and then later on, I moved into the development and evaluation of the higher education. So, and in my current position, I've been acting around three years now. Okay, shortly about my employer first. So uh, the current FINEC was established around four years ago. And I think that many of you know already that there were three former organizations, smaller organizations behind FINEC, which were merged at the time of establishing FINEC, and now, which is actually rather untypical in the international context, we have one quality assurance and evaluation body at the national level for all the levels of education, from pre-primary education via higher education to liberal adult education. So actually, I do have colleagues who work on the all levels of education in our office. And currently we have a head office in Helsinki and then a smaller office in Jyväskylä as well. And the number of staff is around 55 at the moment. Uh, shortly about the types of the evaluations we have in the field of higher education in Finnegg at the moment, uh, the great deal of resources for higher education are at the moment uh, tied within the audits of the quality systems, because as you have already seen, we are in the very end of the sec so-called second round of audits for the higher educations. And we have a similar criteria and targets and audit manual, both for the universities and universities of applied sciences. And since 2005, all the Finnish institutions has been gone, has gone through at least once through the audit process. As somebody, that lady in a turquoise 
Blaus mentioned <laughs> already, we are soon starting uh, the third round of audit as well. Uh, the third round audit concept has been developed during the past two years. And if you're interested on the upcoming concept, you can find uh, the next manual on our web pages as well. So it's publicly available already. And the third round concept will be um, piloted within two institutions during this year. Uh, they will be Swedish-speaking University of, of Applied Sciences, Novia, and then Jyväskylä Universities of Applied Sciences. Then we also carry out thematic, so-called thematic evaluations at FEDEC for the higher education. And there are two examples on the evaluations which are at the moment ongoing. Uh, there is one evaluation going on on the teacher education and one on the basic medical, basic medical education. And then, in addition, in our selection of services, there is also a possibility for the institutions to um, took a kind of a voluntary engineering accreditation, uh, which is called EURES. EURES is a transnationally developed concept, primarily for the engineering programs. And there has been some evaluations carrying out, carried out in Finland as well within this framework. But uh, so far, only among the universities of applied sciences. But this is something which is not obli obligatory for the institutions. So institutions are free to consider whether they feel that they get some added value from this kind of an accreditation. So then a couple of words about uh, your institution's audit process. So uh, it's a long time which is actually going for one whole audit process. So the agreement between FINEC and your institutions uh, on, the audit, on, the, on the upcoming audit was made around a year ago. And after that, FINEC started a rewriting process of, uh, the, of the experts for the audit team. And it's always our committee for the higher education evaluation who finally nominates the team. But as I already explained to you, based on your questions, from the audience, uh, the preparatory work, uh, so looking for the suitable expert, it's done by the project managers in FINAC practice. <coughs> then there is always a written audit material, uh, which is to be submitted by the institutions who took part in the audit, who takes part in the audit. And at the moment, we are in a stage of preparing both on your side at your institution and also on the FINEC side. We are preparing for the audit visit, which shall take place in the upcoming April. Then this kind of a uh, pre-meeting or pre-event is always a necessary part of the, of the process because based on the experience gathered in FINEC from the audits, it's very beneficial to meet the people, both the staff members and students, in advance before we come for the actual audit visit and provide some kind of an opportunity to discuss the issues in advance. <coughs> so, uh, once the report is ready, and it usually takes two, three months to prepare a report after the visit, uh, there is a committee meeting, and in your case, that takes place in the upcoming September. And the committee, as already discussed today, will make a decision whether you pass the audit or whether you are subject for re-audit. And after that, there will, there, there will always be a concluding seminar in the premises of the institutions which have been audited, where, once again, the staff members and the students shall have opportunity to discuss the result of the audit, not only the, is the matter of passing or not passing, but uh, the strengths, weaknesses, and good practices which are highlighted in the upcoming audit report. Well, as you already know, your audit visit will take place in April, and it's like usually a three-day visit from Tuesday to Thursday. It's necessary to note at this point of, at this point of my presentation that there is basically two sources of material the audit team is using when it makes its evaluation. The first source of material is the written audit material, which is submitted by the institution. 
and the basic audit material that includes some statistic and uh, organization charts and issues like this. And then there is always that self-evaluation report. Guidelines for these materials are given in the FINAC audit material, so they are the same for all the institutions. The second source of the material we have are the interviews which we carry out during the audit visit. And nothing else. As you know, and as we all know, the higher education institutions, they are big actors in a society. So there is a lot of information and material available on all the higher education institutions. Other evaluations, public discussions, news pieces, social media and things like this. But the audit team just uses the written audit material defined in the audit manual and the information which is gained in the, in the interviews, nothing else. Uh, the bay. Oh, please go on. Yes. Uh, yes. I'm sorry for that because <laughs> I think, as you all understand, I've been using this slide in some other similar occasions as well. But I really understand your question because, yes, in your case, we shall pay special attention for the artistic activities because we realize it's included our, in our criteria. But as you know, in a case of many institutions in Finland, in, in, many higher education institu in many higher education institutions in Finland, artistic activities does not have any special role. But we really understand that in your case, it's something which is really central. <laughs> yes, good. Yes, the basic. Um, so, before uh, uh, the, we have already received in January the written audit material, and the audit team is studying it at the moment. And then, when the team comes for the visit, it aims to verify and supplement the information provided in the written material. So that's the main purpose of the visit. And as Minna already explained, we try to establish and plan the visit in a way that which somehow maintains, main, main, maintains the dialogue. So we are not just coming to test you that how well you know your quality manual or how well do you know your processes and things like this. But it should be always about discussion. So then a few words about the upcoming visit program which is designed just for your institution. Our audit manual gives some very common guidelines for all the programs, but after that, uh, the each audit team chosen for the institutions, they have a rather much flexibility when designing their own program. And that's why we understand, that's made in a way like that, bec that, because we understand that institutions are different and there is no one program which would fit, which would fit for all. So that's why we always tailor a bit. In your case, we have chosen those three programs which were already presented by Minna. Uh, uh, two of them were chosen by your institution and, and one of them was chosen by you, uh, uh, by the team. And then we have been trying to examine the material, the audit material you have provided in a way that we understand enough well in advance how is your institution at the moment. And we have been trying to select both the units and individuals for interviews, which would create a comprehensive and representative program to provide enough information for making the evaluation after the visit. There are a couple of rules we always follow in our audit programs. And one of the most important rules is that teaching staff and students are always interviewed separately. And in your case, all the interviews take place in the Vallila campus, because it's much easier for the audit team just to make a net for the one campus for three days and then meet all the peoples in one place. So we'll, we'll, we'll see you in April in Vallila campus. Well, on the first day of the visit, we usually focus on the quality system as, as a whole. So, the audit team decided to start with three interviews which would cover the whole top management 
So the first one is for the rectorate and human resources director. The second one is for the deans and vice deans. And the third one is for the other support services directors. But that, that will practically take the first, the first three hours of the visit. We'll meet, as, as usually, we'll meet representatives from your university's board. And then, when you ask about uh, how we chose the third sample program, we are, we are not just meeting people from those sample programs, but, but, but on the first day of the visit, there will be three interviews. First one covering teaching staff, and that should be a mixed group. So we'd like to see teachers from the different disciplines in the same interview, and they should be other teachers than those who teach in those sample programs. So that is one way to extend the representativeness of the audit visit. After that, there will be a mixed group of students, and on the first day we usually like to meet students who are the so-called most active ones. So those one who are active in the student union issues, those one who are active in your departments, those one who are active in the quality management, for example, active in giving feedback and things like this. And then, in the end of the day, in the end of the first day, there will be interview of the external stakeholders. On the second day, we'll focus on the sample programs. And you have already heard about the programs. Uh, the first one will be the music pedagogy, covering both bachelor's and master's levels. Uh, the second one will be the Academy of Fine Arts doctoral programs. And the third one, degree program in acting in Swedish. And in case of all these three samples, there will be two interviews, one for the teaching staff and possible other staff included in the program staff, and the second one will be for the students. So six interviews on the samples altogether. In addition to these sample interviews, there will be a so-called thematic interview, which shall cover the optional audit target chosen by your institution. So the thematic interview on the quality management of the design of the educational provision. And that's actually made in the very beginning of the second day, and after that will follow all the sample interviews. So, on the last day of the visit, there is still some work to do. So, as already discussed, uh, it's obvious that artistic activities play a big role in your institution's activities. So, the audit team decided to carry out a thematic interview on the quality management of the artistic activities. Uh, after that, uh, the thematic interview on the quality management of the research will follow. And then, as usually, we'll also like to meet people involved in the support services. To make it a bit easier for the inter participants, we decided to divide support services into two categories. So first, we'd like to meet people who, who offer services for the students. And second, we'd like to meet people who offer services for the staff members and for the external parties. And in the very end of the third day, there will be the last meeting uh, with the top management group in its extended form. And that is the last possibility for the audit team to post questions for your internal parties. So if there is still something left, it can be asked from the management group that would you clarify this and, and so on. And as it practice in all FINEC audits, the audit team will also provide a kind of an um, preliminary feedback for the top management. It's not public yet, so you can handle it inside the institutions if there was, but because only the report will be public, so we wish that you are not delivering it outside the institution at this point of the process. But it's something which will be included in a report later on as well, but just some first notions that how is the feeling after the three days of visit. So, a few words about how to prepare for the interviews. 
Basically, the audit team is interested in your everyday work and studies. So just keep in your everyday practices and you do not try to play something else. The in, as I already mentioned, interviews are not exams to test your quality knowledge. So basically there are no wrong answers because we realize that in every institution there are people working on the different levels, people working for the different disciplines and so on. So we, real, we understand it from the very beginning that you can see the things a bit differently from, from different angles. So just be brave to use your own language and your own angle and point of view. Obviously, you do not need to memorize the quality documentation by heart, so we are not testing whether you all speak about exactly with the same terminology about all the quality related, related issues. And, which is important as well, please do not bring any additional materials to the interview. So, they are discussions and they should be dialogic, so it's not worth bringing any quality manuals or process descriptions with you and, and, send, and then in the middle of the interview start to examine oh, on which page it's a jet or things like this. So just come as yourselves. As already mentioned by Minna, interviews are confidential, so Phoenix staff members will make notes on the interviews, but they are only for the audit team and once the report is finished, we'll get rid of the notes. <laughs> so, as in this case, uh, the, oh, please, come on. Pardon? Uh, what material? Oh, you mean the quality-related material from your institution, okay. So basically, we do not accept that students know the things exactly in the same way that the staff members do, because their position is different. But then it's up to the institution, and in your, up, up, up to your practices, so how much the students actually are aware, for example, about the process descriptions and... and, and and so, and the guidelines you probably have in, inside the institutions and things like this, but it's up to the institution and the programs as well. Did this answer to your question or? Okay, good. So, um, in this case, uh, due to the bilingual educational task of the Uniarts Helsinki, uh, we decided that uh, the interviews within the Swedish-speaking program will be fully carried out in Swedish, both with the staff members and with the students. And we also realized after the discussion with your contact persons that your staff and student body is that much international that it's worthwhile to carry out some of the interviews, both in Finnish and in, in English. We haven't received the list of the interviews dead from the institution, but once we have it, we aim to design the interviews in a way that there is a possibility to answer and participate, also for the, those staff members and students who speak primary English and not Finnish. But in the end of all, because the, ac the agreed language for the whole audit is Finnish, the report will be only in, in Finnish. As, as is the case with all the Finnish fin fin reports, there will be a short abstract in Swedish and in English as well, but the full report will be in Finnish. Well, uh, about the language used, I would say that if you do not understand when being in the interview, if you do not understand something which is asked, even if it's asked in your own language, so please just remind us, because uh, they should be, as I've been mentioning for uh, several times, it should be a dialogic. A dialogue. So, if somebody is using terminology you don't you don't understand it or you don't you do not recognize enough well, just make a note. Would you clarify that? Then it's easier for all of us. And what is the case in all Finnac interview uh, evaluations? All the interviews are 
aim to carry out in a way where you can use your own language and terminology as well. Well, a few words about contact persons in this particular audit. So, as mentioned, I'm a contact person from Finex side, and the contact persons in Uniart side are Vice Director Paula Tuovinen and Planning Manager Alina Savolainen, which in practice means that if any of you staff members or students have something you'd like to ask about the audit from Finex, you should contact first your own contact persons in your institution, and they will then manage it with me. And that's the same in the Finex side. That is, somebody from Finnegg would like to know something about this particular audit that will be handled via me. Well, uh, Minna touched a bit this topic already, but after the audit, as mentioned, the audit report will be publicly available, usually on the same day when the decision is made, on Finnegg web pages. And it, 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 in a current form, it's rather extensive, more than 50 pages, I would say. And in the end of the all, there will, uh, there will be kind of a summarizing chapter, chapter number nine, uh, which is highlighting the strengths, good practices, and recommendations for the further development for your, just for your institutions. And as mentioned already for several times, if you pass the audit, based on a decision made in a committee, you get this label. But if you do not, you are subject to re-audit. And we have an established procedure for the pre-audit as well. That's described in the FINEC audit manual. So you, you can check it and examine it in detail if you wish later on. Um, the time of the re-audit visit and the schedule of the re-audit will be agreed by the institution, as is the case in a normal audit, and it usually takes place in a two, three years after the audit decision. When a committee makes a decision on the requested re-audit, it also specifies the targets, and what are exactly the issues which will be re-audited, because as mentioned, uh, the normal audit covers all the operations of the institution, but uh, then it's if there is a need for the re-audit, it usually means that there is something which is, you know, good, not good enough yet. So then, uh, in a decision made by the committee, it, it's usually written that, okay, the targets for the re-audit will be a degree education and um, development of the quality system, or targets for the re-audit will be societal interaction and the quality system as a whole. And then later on, the re-audit is focusing on these defined targets. Uh, the re-audit visit is a bit shorter, maybe only a one day, and also the theme for the re-audit is, uh, is, not, is not that extensive than for the normal audit. If the re-audit is needed, and then if institution after it passes, it got the similar label than after the normal audit, which is valid for the six years. And on the FINEC web pages, there is a register on the audited institutions, and it's not visible in a register where the label was earned after the normal audit or re-audit. So when you have passed, you have passed. And in addition, FINEC has a practice of organizing so-called audit follow-up seminars each year for those institutions who've been audited around three years ago. It's not obligatory to part to to join the seminar, but mostly institutions like to do that, I, I would say so. So it's, it's a seminar where institutions who were audited around three years ago has a workshop possibility to present the activities they have done based on the audit recommendations for the other institutions' representatives, and then got some feedback that, okay, why did you impl implement the recommendations in that way, and how does it work for you, and things like this. And we have a pre-decision, kind of an initial decision, that 2018, this kind of a follow-up seminar will take place in October, but we haven't agreed on the exact date yet. But we aim to do it as soon as possible, so, and after that, that will be delivered for the institutions as well. So, that was all from my side, so it says to see you in April, and I'm happy to answer your questions if there are any.
Hello, I have one question. Uh, I would like to know if Finnec has some kind of expertise of knowledge on how other countries in Europe have been auditing um, on a national level art schools. Uh, I would say that we have um, knowledge from past two decades because um, national quality assurance or external quality, external quality assurance agencies, they have a European level network called ENQA. So we know rather well uh, the operations of our sister organizations. And there are countries in Europe, in Europe who have chosen, let's say in let's say 15 years ago, as Finec did, uh, to carry out audits of the quality systems, but then there is a large amount of countries as well who carry out so-called program accreditations as a national activity. And I would say that uh, the decisions made on the national level, that how is that handled, they are usually derived on their national edu higher education system. So I would say that in those countries where there is a lot of private provision, educational provision in a field of higher education, there is a real need for the accreditation as a national activity as well. Because, um, you know, national authorities have to know whether the privately funded institutions and privately maintained institutions, whether they meet the criteria set for the national degree programs. So they have to check it somehow. But as we all know, in Finland we do have privately maintained institutions, but we do not have privately funded institutions because degree leading education is free for the students by law. So all the institutions, no matter what is their ownership background, get funding from state. So um, as it was mentioned in Minna's presentation, so one of the basic reasons for choosing audit for Finland in, uh, around 2003 was that it was estimated that Finland's higher education system is rather major already uh, compared to, the, for example, many Eastern European countries when the, where there was a huge race of private higher education after the Soviet collapse. East, many Eastern European countries are highly accredited countries because they have that much like pa Paula knows actually very well, because you have been in, in, involved in those uh, evaluations, I remember that. So. But okay, this, this was a long explanation now, but, <laughs> but the summary of it, I think that we know rather well our sister organization's activities well, and we follow it as an ongoing practice, so it's part of our job. Hello, I am Sanna Vitanen from Sibelius Academy. Mm -hmm. I just have a question about the interviews. Um, I understood that they are group uh, interviews, but mm -hmm. in your slides it said that the interviews are confidential. Mm -hmm. So I would like to ask, are there different kinds of interviews or just to clarify what the confidentiality means in a group interview? Okay, okay, that's a good question. So the confidentiality means that uh, we are not talking, you know, outside the interview room. You know, uh, uh, I mean that. Um, how would I say? For example, there is one interview first where um, one group of teachers is saying something, and then on the next interview, we are ma not making any references to the former ones. That, that those people said that. How would you consider that? So you can, you know, uh, and, and so we'll make note about the interviews, but we are not delivering them uh, outside of the audit team. So it's only the report, which is public. And of course, we as a Finex staff members, we are not discussing, you know, for the public that in the interview of the Arts University, they say this and that. And that. We're not talking about anything else than... Well, what is reported in a final report. But of course, if you think about it, it's a group interview, you are right that, of course, the other people in the same group will hear what do you say. So. Uh, may I just add, add one thing? And when we are making a report, uh, we are very careful that we are not making any references to single persons in a report. And we may say that 
teachers in general mentioned and things like that, but we are not saying that um, the degree program heads in this program said and, 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 and things like this. So we are very careful that single persons are not identified in a report. I have one question that is a bit extra one, but uh, do uh, Finec have some international assignments? So do you audit uh, outside Finland? Not at the moment, but we have been doing that once. So 2013, Finec took care of the audit process of the University of Graz in Austria. So it's possible uh, for the foreign institutions to buy an audit from Finec. But of course, um, and actually, as you probably know, in a Finnish case, in our national legislation, it's not stated that all the institutions are, that it's, it's ob obligatory to carry out just FINEC audits. So institutions are free to, to consider other providers as well in the other countries, for example. And, uh, but there are huge differences among the countries in this matter. So some, there are countries who require that all the institutions have to go through the national process. And then there are some other countries like Finland who say that, OK, you can free the provider and choose the provider as you wish inside the Europe, for example. So, so. It, 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 it would be possible. One of the challenges in this matter is it's our geographical location. So, because uh, if somebody from the foreign institutions would like to buy a FINEC audit, so um, we can't use national resources for that. So we have to charge them a full price, which means that because Finland is located like it is, uh, the travel costs are usually a, a, a bit higher than for those a quality assurance agencies who are located in a central Europe. So, and of course, we have to charge the amount of money uh, from the foreign customers, which is used for the whole process. So, but yes, we could do that. Okay. Maybe we continue with the, with the panel. Or would you need a couple of minutes for a coffee? Yeah, let's have a coffee first. So we take five minutes, 20 past. Yeah. Oh. 
Otas mä projektorin kokonaan pois päältä. Mä oon mun kiileksiä täällä. Joo. Toi... Tää on hauska, mä nekin istun täällä päässä. Aina vaan tuolla. Mä oon kyllä aika matala tuolla. Niinpä. Joo. Voi vaan ajota tänne. Okay, we will continue with the with the panel. Um, unfortunately, we have to sit behind. Um, we are co quite far away from you, but because of the microphones, we we have to sit here behind. So uh, Sofia will be asking some questions that the students have have uh, made, and Alina will uh, take care of the time. So first of all, I ask that everyone ask uh, everyone answers only one. Uh, we have one minute of time for each answer at first. So, um, yeah. okay, let's start. start. So, yeah, welcome to the panel discussion. Yeah, now it's on. So, welcome to the panel discussion. And um, first of all, I would like to hear from you that who are you and what do you do in the University of Arts? Please, Rika can start. Hello, I'm Riikka Karjalainen and I'm uh, studying lighting design in Theatre Academy. I'm doing my master's thesis right now, so uh, so I'm at, at that point in my studies. And hi, my name is Laura Grunthal 
uh, I study music education at the Sibelius Academy. Uh, yes, I'm fourth year student and uh, last year I worked as a chair of the student union board. Hello, my name is Siri Maya Heino. Um, I'm a project coordinator and I work here at the Theatre Academy both in uh, study services and in research services. Hello everybody, my name is Frank Brümmel. I'm lecturer and sculptor at the Academy of Fine Arts. Hello, my name is Paula Tuovinen. I'm vice rector for education and uh, I've been working as a yoga paikan höyle and I don't know what it is in English, <laughs> but uh, I'm in charge of, uh, of uh, building this quality assurance system here. Yeah, mm, nice. Uh, and then I would like you to tell that what quality means you with three words and how is how do you implement quality in your own work? Quite shortly, please. Let's go from that side now. Uh, for me, quality is maybe the the most important word for me is is clarity uh, in uh, in uh, leadership and management and uh, the whole organization. It should be clear what what the organization is. What are the um, what, what, who is in charge of what? And uh, the pro so, and the second one is maybe the smoothness of the processes, or maybe lean processes in the sense that we don't hassle around, which takes a lot of energy from everyone. And uh, maybe also the 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 fluid uh, the fluidity of information, which is actually the the. Um, if if everything is if the organization is clear then uh, then it's very easy to have fluid in information maybe those by now yes i uh, i have a slightly different opinion about this quality thing somehow i mean i have an idea a personal idea like what uh, quality might be in art and somehow actually we have been like circling around this vacuum all the all the time here nobody has been addressing like what is the quality process actually looking for and overseeing somehow um, I think we are negotiating day by day new on a new base like what quality means for us in art and uh, what we are looking to so I think that is a is a problem in the audit uh, process here Um, from my point of view, which is maybe closer to Paula's, because I work in uh, in the administration, for me, quality first thing comes to my mind is having an objective for everything you do in your work, and that the objective is clear, like Paula said, and and for me especially shared that it, that everybody working together has to share the same objective. They understand the objective in the same way. And uh, to ensure that, communication, communication, communication. Uh, yeah, uh, I link the quality closely to uh, developing and, and also feedback system in everyday work and studies. Uh, and I think that as artists, uh, we want to develop our own, own skills const continuously. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the feedback system is, is very important to this. And also that, that we can uh, every day think that how can we be, uh, be better all the time. Uh, for me, that's a quality. Uh, for me, quality is, uh, well, it's honesty and transparency and equality in repre the representation of different groups and uh, when, well, I think the problem with quality is that when you have good quality, then it's hard to notice, and when it, when it's not that good, then it, then it's like visible. But yeah, so I think it's equality and honesty and transparency m most of all. So yeah, so quality means a lot of things basically. Uh, but now I would like to continue in a way that I will ask a question and target it, target it to a certain person. And if you want to comment, please raise your hand. And also for the audience, please raise your hand if you want to ask something or comment yourself. This is like a 
we discuss them in a way that you don't have to sit silently. Uh, so the first one is for actually for Frank now when you said that audit is a problem that no, no, how, no, no, no. How, no, no how it's not the audit is not a problem the process <laughs> itself is is really good. Uh, <laughs> there are yes, problems so <laughs> how do you see the quality wheel you remember yeah. you saw the illustration yeah. how does it uh, relate to your own work and your own artistic work uh, I see the, uh, and I don't want again to uh, to, to touch, uh, not not to be too offense to to anybody who's working hard on all these processes here and somehow. But uh, I see the 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 uh, the the quality uh, or this wheel as a kind of um, uh, we are kind of the school is kind of forced on on bringing up these kind of ideas how 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 it works in the school somehow. Uh, by the process of we, we heard about already or saw on the slides the kind of Bologna process and on the national level I, I, I made the note uh, here that uh, this uh, audit evaluates whether the quality system meets the national criteria somehow. So um, I think that the quality wheel is probably something very very nice and many people have been working on it and many people have can identify with it. But I also think that it could be something completely different at the same time. Um, and that is something that we need to be uh, aware of in, in, in an art school, in my opinion. Yeah. Does somebody want to comment? <laughs> Paola, please. Um, I want to ask a prov provocative question from, from you. Um, so would you like to have your salary on time, on your, uh, on your account? Yes, yes, yes. I, of course, I, <laughs> I, under, I understand like that. Uh, that this uh, the, the whole quality process. I could have uh, have answered to the first question like somehow. Yes, it's the whole system. How the wheels go into everything. Everybody needs to work together, and we we, we on a daily basis we try to do our best uh, to have best outcomes and 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 things like that. Yes, of course. Yeah. But on the other side, um, I think that. If we talk about this quality system and, and this overseeing, what is the quality system overseeing? That in the end, the, we have a kind of end product. Yeah, a, a, a bad word, I think, for, for, for students graduating from a school. But, but, and this is the thing where we want to see how the quality came in somehow. But I think that it, at least in art, it's not possible to, to have an objective, uh, objective view on that. Uh, yeah, I want to uh, uh, discuss about this because actually what the quality work in our uh, university is, is exactly that. How can we uh, assure that this, these processes are uh, suitable for the arts? So, for example, how, how can we assure that the student and the teacher has a, that kind of a discussion that something, uh, what, what the teacher and the student want to do? can come true so it's not any it's not anything um, uh, standardized product that we want to that the students uh, are when, when they come out yeah. thanks a lot for the like it's good to criticize this is what yeah. the panel is yeah, for well, that's, so what, that's what we need continue frank if you want to like say something it's really good and now I would like to know that uh, what kind of information would you need about the quality system? And this is for the students. Uh, Lauri and Rico, please. Yeah, I can start. Uh, well, I think uh, I as a student, I have been participating in uh, different like boards and councils uh, during my whole studies here so I think uh, I am not able to like answer from the perspective of my like classmates who, who haven't been involved so much uh, but it's uh, but it's tricky as I said uh, because when the quality is good we don't think about it and and like uh, this has been like a problem during my whole studies of how to get students involved in like making the decisions and uh, how to inspire inspire uh, students to get involved. Uh, so there have been efforts like making charts and visual stuff and that is good for me but uh, still I think that 
it hasn't like reached uh, many of the students. So I don't think uh, if there should be like a total uh, disaster uh, and then people would like uh, wake up and like, oh shit, this, uh, uh, these are like important matters. But uh, it's our like, uh, it's, um, we are all responsible for inspiring other students uh, and like teachers can also provide information and like uh, what is the word for encourage uh, students to participate more even if it means like that you have to be two hours away from from the course because sometimes it's uh, as as like uh, important to be participating in decision making yes uh, i agree with rika that uh, that is a question that i would like to ask uh, my classmates because as, as rika i think that uh, there are many students that don't even know what is quality assurance system or, or what is audi auditing and, and so on uh, but to every student's uh, everyday life i, I think that what I previously said about the feedback system, uh, a student should know some tools uh, to improve the quality in their studies and, and the feedback formula or, or the or work, working feedback system is one of them. Uh, and also, uh, according to previous discussion about the, uh, what, what the quality should, uh, should do or what it should, what it should be, uh, I think that uh, we have to look closely uh, how we uh, put the quality tools in practice, and then also, uh, for example, students uh, or uh, and how they how how they uh, get know these quality tools and and, and how to use them. Uh, and I I think that as Rika said, there is uh, the important role is uh, teachers have have it and and also the uh, study guidance has it. Yeah, maybe that. Can I add? Yeah, uh, like, uh, I think it's also uh, like maybe something to consider that does a, like a one student have to know the whole quality system of the University of the Arts because uh, some of the stuff don't like matter in their everyday life. So I think it's most important that students know that uh, how can I give feedback and the, like Laura said that the feedback system really works and is is available uh, in any point so that is the most important thing for students i think yeah, yeah please yeah. audience question uh, just uh, quickly um what came to my mind listening to you too is that it's it's it, it's really good to have all these tools and make the tools good so they work well but there's kind of a channel, channel challenge to create a culture. Uh, if there are tools, but nobody sees um, their potential and nobody is motivated to use them, they're kind of a, uh, like the effort that was put into developing them is a bit gone to waste. So it's a challenge. I don't know. I haven't got the answer how to create it, but it would be important to create a culture uh, in the uni kind of a the sense of community that everybody who all the staff and students realize that they are part of this community and they have a role and they have a they can influence if if you have already that mindset that you it's not irrelevant it, it is relevant so maybe you'll then go and find the tools and use them last one please there was a question I would like to add uh, <coughs> to this discussion a uh, concept of tacit knowledge, um, which is happening a lot in especially art schools. And I think it has a difference in what kind of feedback is given and how that feedback affects, not only in the, in the relation between teacher and student, but also between student and uh, staff member, for example, who is maybe part of the part of the artistic uh, activities staff members uh, staff members as the sport sport services 
there's a lot of uh, tacit knowledge that these uh, support services staff members have and they have gathered that during the years and years of verbal and face-to-face -face feedback and this quality insurance system assurance system is quite much based on documented feedback and how it's how it's audited it also it has to be somehow documented it, it's not easy to document that kind of feedback relationship this ping pong which is happening between staff members and students when it's based on tacit knowledge yeah uh, i would like to myself comment on that that, that is uh, like really important but then we come to the question of like what is the meaning of the quality assurance system is that you actually have like pedagogical and that kind of um, knowledge that you can use when you use this uh, silent tactic tactic knowledge so that you actually know how you how you discuss with a student or how students should discuss with his or her teacher like it's tactic knowledge is good but it's also like balancing between that we have to also maybe have some like technical information so that if somebody is failing then we have a procedure to like tackle that but that was very good point um yep something else someone yeah i would like to answer to, to, to uh, i would like to answer to both of you somehow because it addresses all also like kind of daily teaching somehow it's very difficult actually at, at least uh, from my experience to get a, a proper feedback somehow it often goes in the in the in the oral oral way somehow in the discussion somehow the feedback goes very well but it's not communicated so well as it would have been written but getting a written feedback is a uh, quite a challenge for example yeah like as an example like last week we had a we had a, a seminar like 30 people it's not possible to get immediately a oral feedback so so i'm sending the uh, the forms to them and until today two people have answered of 30 so that's the reality somehow and and then it's very difficult to 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 develop something out of out of that so that so this is uh, very important no, it's very important on how to how to communicate uh, the, the tools to the people and and how to uh, apply them. Paula, please. Yeah, we have uh, this quality wheel. Actually, there is the center, and uh, um, it can be the the uh, the heart of the of the university. And in there uh, is a lot of this kind of tacit knowledge or that kind of feedback that Yuri was talking about. But then in the organizational level, which is the outside of the of this core. We have to be sure that we, we ask students some feedback from the whole operations of the university. And we have to have operation we have to be sure that we can that the teachers have a possibility to give feedback uh, for their bosses. And we have to be we, we we have to be aware that the that the ministry is giving some feedback to us. So there's a lot of uh, different kind of feedback, but the the uh, the quality assurance system is actually working around the, this heart, which is the most important thing, of course, but we have to be sure with, the, with this uh, system that we get all the possible information for, for the over, so that the heart can kind of beat. Yeah, thanks. Uh, maybe, was there a question? No, <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe we continue with the next question which is for Siri, and uh, who can I contact in quality issues if I have a problem? You mean if a student has a problem? Or if somebody has a problem? This is a really open question. <laughs> mm. Should I take it as in who would I contact myself or who would yeah, I... Yeah. Quality problem. <laughs> 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 what, what's a quality problem? Uh, <laughs> can you... Like, I don't really know what you mean by a quality problem. I mean problem. this problem of, like, uh, actually when we have these, like, the guides and things that, and we have, like, these uh, programs, how to and procedures, but how would I actually, if I have a problem, would you know what to do? Where do I find the information 
how to contact someone. Uh, who to turn to. Yeah. That person. Uh, well, for myself, when I have been working here for almost a year and a half, my first intuition always when I have, I don't know, how does this, how should I do, is uh, turn to my like peer colleagues. And then also Artsy. So I try to find information on Artsy. Those are my two sources. And then, of course, turning to one's su- superior. That's very important to have the kind of relationship with your superior that you can always go ask for help. That's my general advice <laughs> for getting help. And if you're thinking about a student, of course, a student can turn to study services, the study coordinator of the program, and the teaching staff. And if the teaching staff can't help, they can, again, turn to us. But I feel that there is a pretty good problem-solving attitude around this building. Mm. Lauri, please. Yeah, uh, this is an interest, uh, interesting stu- subject, and I, I think that uh, as a student, uh, or was it yesterday I spoke with my, with my friend who has a problem and, and he doesn't know to whom he should spoke, speak. And, and I think that about talking with the clari- clarifying uh, these like paths or, or ways to contact right people, so we have to also uh, make clear to students that uh, who is re- responsible to which subject and, and who, who will be the best person to contact in, in different subjects just to add a little bit perhaps um so if i'm imagining a situation that a student has an issue and maybe they feel like they don't want to discuss it with a teacher because teacher might be a bit too close to the issue then i would say to turn to the study services because if it is not our core uh work we would probably have like a wider perspective and then know who to turn to 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 content continue this yeah uh, yeah, my feeling that at least in theater academy, the, even if you don't know the right person, then you can uh, ask pretty much anyone. So, and I think this is like shared between my fellow students that uh, you don't have to know the right person, and uh, or and you can ask basically anyone. And I've, I've have been like uh, uh, working as a artsy mentor for a lot of my uh, fellow students so I am constantly digging up stuff from there but yeah but basically anyone in theater academy I think yeah. it's good you have the tactic knowledge yourself <laughs> I don't know if Minna and Kati have ever heard of over service and we have sometimes in here uh, that kind of problems quality problems as well <laughs> Uh, Anders, yeah. Yeah, I was just considering there that in my experience on an acting program, I sometimes reflect over that, that students go through such a complex and, and also quite radical psychosomatic uh, process during the years here. And they are sometimes overwhelmed with problems that takes quite much time to sort out where do they actually belong and uh, they lack perhaps a perspective or, or overview, they don't see it from the helicopter perspective, but because they are completely in the certain challenge with themselves that can be as much private as they are professional. And so we are meeting quite complex phenomena. Uh, and that also, that we we teachers need to recommend them to go to the student psycholo- psychologist or if there's other needs that they have or try to create forum and be very inventive of forums all the time like to take care of this because it's I would say almost every day a new urgent catastrophe (laughs) (laughs) that is and and, uh, in a way it's normal every other day somebody is crying (laughs) yeah yeah Uh, I would like to ask the audience a question like a Tiny question. And do you know if a, a colleague or a student comes with a problem that she or he has 
been sexually harassed, do you know who to contact? Everybody's nodding. Oh, that is, well, then the quality system is working pretty well, <laughs> if you all know that, but, yeah. But the problem is uh, that, sorry. Uh, yeah. We, the, in the uh, context of the Me Too, the, there was a big meeting here in this mm. very space and we all declare that we are totally against these kind of ac actions mm. but that doesn't help us in those situations uh, that can appear so there's something else of a culture it's much more complex phenomena than just agreeing on a, a zero tolerance policy yeah, so but it's, not it's, agreeing, but knowing how to proceed if somebody tells you information is the critical point of acting. That if a student comes to you, and then you should basically know to yes. tell her or him that where to go. Because it's not maybe you yeah. who can solve the problem, but you should be. And that's kind of a difficult thing in this, kind of from a perspective of a student that... Everybody doesn't know everything. <laughs> yes, and so then the these documents of policies can be very yeah. important because we can always go back to them. Yeah. It is In supposed to be yeah. like this. Yeah. Uh, we have instructions. Uh, we have this big meeting uh, What about Anders was talking. And then I sent all these in introductions to the program leaders and to the planners and they, so that they have to go through with students these instructions how to proceed these things and uh, my uh, room doors have been open and I have met quite many students by this nice to hear uh, yeah but that's also like a thing to think for everybody, maybe that uh, do I actually know these things? Not only the sec uh, harassment thing, but also other things. Uh, but then I would like to ask: Do you have something to ask? Some other comments? Yeah. Thanks. I have a, a general question concerning your culture or cultures. How do you think that the uni arts or the theater academy? the Academy of Fine Arts or Sibelius Academy culture, how does it help you to the specific features in your culture? How do they help you to keep up good quality? And how do these cultures inhibit you from keeping up good quality? I'm thinking about what your working, working culture? culture in a sense yeah. uh, I guess that for instance in theatre academy you feel that you are you are kind of living up to certain culture or certain values or certain ways of working mm -hmm. so how do you think they, they help you for instance in theatre academy how do they help you keeping a good culture a good uh, quality system and on the other hand other features in your cultures that make it difficult for you to to follow uh, a quality assurance system. This is maybe more a little bit like philosophical question. Mm. Uh, my answer is not very philosophical. It's actually quite practical, but I feel a, a good thing, like a, a um, positive thing that I think of is I feel that um, uh, the culture here in Theatre Academy is really, uh, there is, um, there is, Equality and there's we're not very hierarchical. That's a tricky word. Hierarchical. There's not a big hierarchy. You can approach anybody. There, you don't feel like there's a procedure of, like Marit says, her door is open, for instance. But uh, then something to develop. Um, I th I find that there is still a bit of a there is a maybe as there are differences in working cultures maybe in that three academies. So we've been in one university for five years soon, but uh, that's something to still work on, the collaboration between the academies and finding common ground when we are collaborating a lot already, but maybe those are the points where the processes could be smoother and clearer. Paula? 
Uh, I think that um, uh, all the academies are uh, thriving to uh, excellence, but in a bit different way. Like uh, Sibelius Academy has, uh, especially the classical music side, they are they want to be uh, the top uh, world top uh, players of, of classical music. <coughs> and in in theater academy, I think this like the excellent teamwork. Um, people want to to be the best, but doing it in a team. And in in Academy of Fine Arts, it's more like the the criticality of the arts, which is actually the the way how to be excellent in the in the fine arts. That how how can you be critical and have the free arts uh, so that you can express exactly what you want and what you see in the society and somehow comment on that. But the, there is the excellence uh, in all all the art forms, kind of the same type of excellence that everyone is thriving. That. Yeah, I can continue. Uh, like Paula said, that uh, uh, we have in theater academy, probably because of the field of our work, and the like, the nature of performing arts as a like a group work. Then it like helps us to do things together and actually help each other. Uh, and there are quite few of us, so we also, uh, most of us know each other, so it's like easy to ask, ask for help and uh, stuff like that. But the like the hard part, I think, is because the like the pressure is quite hard that comes from uh, from the real working life or stuff like that, and the like uh, working methods in in like like in the real world are, are like quite hard sometimes that people come uh, come to work when they are sick and like exhausted and the pressure is so hard that I think that that might be uh, bad for the quality of of our doing whether it's teaching or learning or stuff like that because the pressure is so hard. Frank, did you have something? Uh, yes, like I, I maybe need to refer to my background, like coming from Germany. I'm, I've been living since uh, over 10 years in Finland and I'm, I'm, I must say that the working culture like in, 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 in the Academy of Fine Arts, I think it's just hilarious there. It's really, really lovely place to be. It's, it's good to, uh, it's, it's nice colleagues, you know, all these things like hierarchies of flat, you can always go to everyone and so on and so on. It's just really nice. And uh, on the other side, it's true, everybody is looking to, to, to go to a kind of excellence somehow. But I, I, I think, again, if I compare with Germany, that's why I was asking for the audit in, 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 in other European countries also, I would think that those schools would fall through uh, the German academies completely through the audit uh, somehow. But on the other side, contrary, uh, the, the, the outcome uh, is actually uh, high-level artists. So that there's there's something which I which I could think that what what is going on then here, in in, in the school uh, are we overdoing things? Uh, are we too engaged? Would it be nice to have more freedom, more time, uh, concentrate on own work with the students, uh, things like that? I would consider as important. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, somebody from the audience, do you have something to ask? Uh, I am a believer in a quality assurance system, yes, but uh, and I have worked in a science university. But at the same time, we have a lot of individuality in our students' paths. So standardized procedures don't always work, and we need a lot of flexibility. And this is also, I work in the student affairs, so this is why we also sometimes over serve people. But I think it's uh, very important to remember that 
too much standardizing in art or even in science. We wouldn't have penicillin if, if they had had uh, standardized systems at those days. So accidents and experiments are also important. Yeah, of course. Now or later on? Uh, please, no. no. Okay. I just wanted to make one comment because I think uh, this issue of standardizing or not, uh, you pointed out, I think it's very central when we talk about the quality management, not only in, in the context of uni arts, but in general, in the context of the higher education. And in the FINEC audit, criteria, we do not require standardized procedures. But of course, if institution has defined itself in its quality policy or in the other documentation that we are aiming standardized processes, then we of course uh, look at that how effectively it's standardized. But uh, if you look at the FINA criteria, what is required from all the institutions is that you have to have a quality management which is effective, visibly effective. But the question of standardize, it's up to the institution. I just wanted to point it out because this is something which is coming up very often when we discuss, when we discuss the, especially in the context of multidisciplinary institutions as yours. Please, Paula. Yeah, I think this is a very important question and uh, uh, for example, what, what Frank just said about this, that maybe the students would need more time, that's exactly uh, feedback that uh, should be discussed with the, with the dean and with the, there should be a feedback, feedback system that where you have a possibility really to, to think about that and do something about it. And that's quality assurance, that you have the poss possibility to actually change things so that, uh, it's, um, that we give the get the best possible uh, product at the end. In our, our product is the artist, so what it, it depends on the on the staff. What kind of artist you, do you want to educate? So it's not standardized in that sense, but um, but exactly it means the, the the discussion and the possibilities possibilities to develop the system the way you like and we like and not how they like. Maybe it's the choice of words now here. Yeah. I think we are all like talking about the same things, like giving the freedom and like, but with the different words. Like, and product is for me also a bit a nasty word. I would not like to be an ending end product <laughs> in the end. <laughs> but yeah, I know what it means kind of that I, it can be all, yeah. Well, anyways, but uh, I think we are, the time is running out. So does somebody have some, final ending words well i would like to say that uh i think the most important part uh as for me as a student uh how to how we can keep up the good quality is that we have uh enough stuff in like in student services and stuff like that so it's essential uh for my working so that I, I will always have someone uh, someone who knows me uh, also like because uh, our student service people they know me and like I'm not just like some student number then it's that is the most essential part for me as a student uh, that I, I can become an ending product or something <laughs> like that so <laughs> I think that was quite good ending for this, <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah. So hey, thanks a lot for taking Thank part, you. and Thank thanks you. for yeah, following up.